Hey everybody, this is Grace. In this video, I'm going to talk about when people blame the victim. That seems like the, um, you know, the go-to for them. And it's not going to be like the usual ones we hear about. Now, usually we have heard, I'd say many of us may have heard or have experienced you know, something or you know somebody who's experienced it. Like whenever a spouse cheats on, you know, cheats and that spouse um, or boyfriend girlfriend whatever it is they they find a way you know they say to turn it around and say it's the other that their fault like if it's a husband he would say well it's because she I cheated because she did this she did that you know that's blaming the victim you know they're they were the, the one who did wrong but they're blaming that victim okay and then we've uh, there's so many different kinds of scenes that can happen and, um, you know, many of us have probably heard along the way. And um, you, know, you can have, you know, some people play the victim like they do somebody else wrong. Like that, that is an example. The husband, you know, he plays the victim and he blames the victim. And he plays that he is the victim of her. She did him wrong. And you can have it to be anybody. It could be. You know, somebody you only know online, somebody you work with, somebody in your family, even a friend, a family member, whomever. Like I said, it could be somebody online that you really don't even know. And they they just want to smear, you know, do a smear campaign. You know, smear campaigns are not just for politicians. But they can, they can do that. Um, whatever it is, they're going to take the blame off of them. Okay, themselves, the ones who are actually doing the wrong, who are doing the wrongdoing. Okay, they'll, they'll find a way to get out of it. You're to blame the other person. Okay, and you know when when somebody pulls that kind of thing, it depends on who the audience is. If the audience is well aware of this kind of thing that this happens, or they just no better than like a cheater no better than to listen to anything the cheater says at that point to defend himself or herself you know because it's all BS but there are people who don't there are people who we all know this we probably all experienced ourselves or maybe even done it ourselves we we believe the person who was wrong you know you know we all learn something for the first time we all have to experience something in order to learn from it in that kind of sense um, or at least read about it you don't just pop it it doesn't just pop into your head in other words when you're really young you have to have some kind of experience that's going to bring it about even if it's something that you read in school <laughs> whatever it is so we're not all you know we don't always have the answers right right away we don't always know who to trust right away so we really shouldn't blame people uh, you know, who, you know, some people like to blame the person who believes them. Well, we need to remember people who are going to do something bad and then blame their victim. These are master manipulators often. Master manipulators. They know how to manipulate people. And they know how to convince them, con them um, into whatever they, you know, narrative they're throwing out there. They want them to know that they are the ones who are wronged, and they'll do anything. And, you know, like you've you've probably heard, maybe I think so, <laughs> not think so, but maybe so, is that they some people go by this, you know, like they're they've done something wrong, they're lying, they're cheating, or whatever they are. That if they say something over and over and over again, um, that some people will start to believe them. Okay, you can you can hear a lot of that these days. <laughs> they repeat the same thing over and over and over again, even though it's false, even though it's wrong, even though it's just totally screwed up. But some people will believe in it, start to believe in it, because they keep hearing it over and over that narrative. So, and then these master manipulators—that's one thing they do. Now, if somebody is putting out something, they're trying to help people, and it is actually something that would help people. And they put it out over and over and over again. No, that's that, that's, that's not bad. Okay, but I'm talking about the people who put things out over and over again. And they are bad. Okay. 
in that they, that's a way to convince people con people now like I said I'm going to give an example that is different I don't know who this person is walking behind my car scary no mask hmm. not in my driveway but behind it anyway um, real life happens in the middle of the video but I'm going to give an example of blaming the victim that's a little different but I think many of us probably many of us maybe I can't say probably maybe have happened I'm not saying everybody I'm saying maybe many of us okay got that straight okay now I'm out here in my what I call my chillmobile <laughs> after a morning it's a Monday morning and for I'd say over two hours I know at least two hours give or take um, I had been working on something that I needed to take care of paperwork this kind of thing you know as a mature adult I need to take care of it and um, it was some forms I was sent I have things sent to me in the mail because I'm a victim of identity theft and uh, I do not like to use do anything online um, you know any kind of forms any kind of applications any kind of anything like that no banking nothing not on my cell phone not on my desktop not on my laptop not on my iPad nothing online because I am a victim of identity theft and have been for many years and let me tell you it's been bad trying to uh, for years I'm talking whew, man at least maybe 20 years trying to correct it right 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 not gonna happen yeah especially when that that person has manipulated so much that um, that when I tried they said to call these three um, I don't know what you call them anymore I, I gave up years ago um, but to secure you know that nobody can get any um, credit cards or anything well they said that under my actual name <laughs> with my actual social security number I don't have enough credit under my name that other person who's using my credit card does so I couldn't change anything oh not my credit card that person who's using my social security number does <laughs> well, yeah. but anyway so I, I won't do anything online well I received these forms and I've received them many times before not, not really not many not, these, not both of these but um, it's, it's, it's a kind of standard form thing and it said that, you know it's easier if you go online and it's secure and all that now over the years probably it, the things are more secure online uh, with all the trouble people have had and everything but I still am like one well, I don't want to trust it well I read these forms and I said oh my goodness I can imagine trying to call them and it'd be hours and hours of waiting on hold and push to this person to that person because that has been my experience in life okay the past can help to predict the future you know kind of thing oh yeah anybody anybody I've ever called recently especially during this time the the hold has been like the, I think the longest one was something like 53 minutes it said the whole you have this hold some of them don't allow them to call you back some of them you have to sit there on hold okay so there's all kinds of service like I said I'm, I'm not gonna say which one it is but so I started you know early this morning and looking over again this paperwork and I had tried before and I just got so frustrated saying why would they do this <laughs> why would they make paperwork and it was a stack I said why would they make it so confusing okay no and they said it's more simple to get online and do it online because it, it gives you prompts and uh, so anyway I, I decided okay I'm gonna call them in the morning and ask the questions that I had questions about it was two different forms like I said a stack of forms big envelope stack of them and I called them and luckily they were there and it, it was only two minute hold Wow and the woman told me what it was it was kind of confusing because I said well wait a minute that's not true though and, well we do it because of this reason and that reason yeah okay and we're not the ones that do this well one of the things I had to do was to go and um, set up an account I said I, I told her I said I don't even know if I have one online and I decided okay th this is too much 
and I'm going to need those prompts. I'm going to need everything that can provide me online like she was talking about. Yeah, that's kind of screwy, really, now. That you want to do everything through the postal service, but no, we're going to make you do, every, do the, all of it online because you're going to have to do it anyway to get those that information. It's like, what the crap? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, yeah, I was going to have to do it anyway. And I, I said, okay, this has got to be more secure by now. So I go in there, and I get on my desktop computer, and I'm using Firefox. And, no, that was not going to work. Okay, it took, it took me uh, two phone calls, three, really, because the first time it didn't make sense. But, um, being transferred to once, at least, the first time I called one place, then that guy said, I don't know why he transferred you to me after I was on a really long hold. You know, not an hour, but still. He said, you need to call the, these people. They don't. And he kept wanting to talk more. And it was very frustrating to me because I wanted just to get through this, this part. And this part was setting up an account. <laughs> I'm serious. I'd get all the way through it. All the information they needed about me, everything like that. And uh, this was not a job application, no. So... Like I said, I don't want to say what it was for, but um, let's go with too much in detail. But once I hit the, I agreed to the terms and conditions and all that, and verified everything I'd put in was correct, you click continue. I click, well, I click continue, and it just sat there thinking, you know, like we used to call it thinking. It just sat there going round and round and round. And let me tell you, I had to call back, and that's when the transfer, all this kind of crap, Finally got to a woman, and she and I spent about 30 minutes trying to figure it out. Okay. I wound up having to get do it from my iPad. Because it would not do it under the usual browsers. We went through more than one. Three, in fact. And she said that she actually has to do it too. Because their, ser their, sis their server is so secure... That it's just certain things that won't work on. Well, to me, that's their problem. <laughs> they make it other people's problem. But, speaking of, okay, where it comes into this whole thing of blame the victim is that more than once was I told that it was probably my computer that was causing the problem. No, I don't think so. I think it's your lousy programming that's causing the problem. <laughs> Seriously. I have had my first computer in 1982. Okay, now, I'm not saying that I'm right on this, but over these years, in 1990 was the first thing I was on that you could call something like social media. Now, I have, I was uh, started off as a math and computer science major. I could give you all kinds of things that would back up my opinion, actual things, and um, things I've heard, uh, I was a member of a group of we just that back then they were called geeks the first we were some of the first I have done many things and I can tell whenever it really is they cannot find an answer they don't know what the pro they don't know maybe even the problem but they don't have the answer so their go-to response is to blame the victim it's or their computer in this you know respect it must be your computer. Something's wrong with your computer. And no, it's not. Nothing else has any problems. Nothing this, that. It's just that their programming is not right. They don't have any... They, they, some of them actually will admit it. Okay, when you say, no, there's nothing wrong with my computer. It's your programming. <laughs> oh, I've dealt with them before. But, yeah, that is their go-to. It's to say, it's, it's your computer system. And there is one of them especially, like, I used to do videos on camera. I did it for, I don't know how long. But, um, from my desktop. And then I, I it went from Windows, whatever it was, to Windows 10. Windows 10, people have said, it causes a lot of problems. But I kept getting those freaking pop-ups. And I just kept getting them and getting them. 
And so eventually, I mean, there was no way to stop him that I could see. There probably was, but I was just said, I'm going to try one of ten. Yeah, okay, right. Not smart. <laughs> really. Things like the webcams won't work. I've called them on it, you know, called the places, and they said, well, it's probably your computer. I said, no, it's not my computer. I said, I've heard that lame excuse. I don't know how long. I said something, well, yeah, actually, you're right. We have to send you a whatever it was, and that that should fix it, and I, they sent it to me. It was crap. It would fix it, but the, the new way that, they, that it would be would be crap, not like it used to be. Makes it more difficult. Does it doesn't work right? <laughs> you know? And it was like every time you turn around, every time Windows would update, I'd have to call them and get another one. So no, I'm not going to do that. It's not happening. Plus, it's too noisy in the house anyway. <clears throat> but this to me is yet another one of those blame the victim things. And this is becoming. It really does seem like, um, you know, people are getting to where they they think that this is the norm. It's a normalization of, you know, it's a, it's a normalization of narcissism. That, you know, when you take, you never take the blame. Whether you're at a job, never take that blame. Always put it back on the customer. You know, that's a normalization of this kind of narcissism. Yeah. Okay, but, but I do really do want to know if they're trained this way. I mean, that sounds like conspiracy theorists. Uh, but no, it's it's more of an observation over all these years. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. My mother was one. My degrees, I actually had to uh, study research. I had to learn research. So no, this is not a conspiracy theory. But it is. It could be a conspiracy in a way, <laughs> conspiratorial, that they're not going to take the blame. And I do wonder, are people trained this way? That you always, you know, or as much as possible, if you cannot find an answer, turn it around and blame the victim blame whatever it is that they can't do whatever they want or somehow it's their fault somehow they must have done something wrong somehow what did you do did you do this when you did not do this but they're going to put it as though you must have done something wrong okay when you didn't now you can read you can follow directions <laughs> well this woman she admitted it she the one I had spoke to today the last one she admitted it. She said that, that she has had trouble herself with these things, and that see that's that's right. That's where we should be in, you know, humans should be, is when something's going wrong, don't and you can't find an answer to it. Don't blame the, the person that is having to deal with it. Two hours this morning, something that should just have taken about five minutes. Seriously, at the maximum, five minutes. Because I type really fast, a hundred and something words per minute. And I should have just been, G -g -g -g, and it's done. But no, I had to make phone calls and all this crap. Do it over and over. I think I did it four or five times. Over and over. I think three of them with her on the phone with me. And she couldn't get it right. We had to go through, like I said, three different um, browsers. So, <laughs> anyway... So then, it, it basically, she said, "Oh, and you're gonna—it's gonna take you a few days before you get uh, your account is affirmed, you know, confirmed, everything on it. So I can't do it for another few days." Now, me, I, I like—I was having anxiety about this because it was so frustrating before I even started. When I tried doing it before, and it's like, "Oh my goodness, why do they make things so so difficult?" Seriously. It should not have been that difficult. And they know that. That's why they have, actually have written in there, it's easier and faster if you do it online. Because online, they, it, it, the computer actually figures it out. Okay. So then they know it. They know this. That doing it by paper is more difficult. And more time consuming. But one thing I kept saying was, hmm, yeah, it's certainly easier and faster. I didn't put it that way. I wasn't that passive aggressive kind of thing. No, but that's not really it. But um, no, I just said, yeah, this is supposed to be made faster. This is not faster. Okay, because I want my point to be heard. And I, and I know, and I, I say to people, you know, I know it's not you, but this, this somebody needs to put, the, you know, bring this up and say, blah, 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 whatever happens. Okay. 
<clears throat> but so now I have to wait, wait a few more days. And I can pretty much bet that when I wait those few more days before I can actually go in and do what I needed to do, that waiting those few days, I'm going to have to wind up calling somebody. <laughs> through another couple of hours at least, give or take. You know, because nothing is made easy with it. So far, as my experience, nothing has been easy. But, but I want to see, how are they going to blame the victim? Because they, they kept saying that, well, maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. It's, maybe it's you, yours, something you do, you're doing. Are you doing this? That's a shame. That's a shame. And I, I hope it's that more and more people, especially younger people, anybody, they they can think through that. They can say that they, there's enough information out there about people blaming the victim that they'll say, no, you're not blaming me for your fault. You're not blaming me for what you're... Your system is not doing you, what you're doing. And you're not going to turn around on me. Okay, I mean, maybe not say it quite like that, but you see what I'm saying. So, yeah. But I, I do worry that we, you know, these kind of things, normalization of narcissism kind of things, situation, that people can hear this stuff over and over and over repeatedly. That it's them, that people just get kind of you know, they, they start to think it's a norm for things to happen. They don't, they give up the fight. They give up saying, well, you're not going to treat me this way. You're not, not just in this situation. We all know that, in, by the way, we all know that any kind of situation can be dangerous. I knew a woman one time, seriously, I worked with her. I was on a temp job. It was years and many years ago. And, uh, um, she, she, um, she was also, and it was something to do with um, medical. Anyway, and there were a bunch of people there. It was some kind of special thing going on. And a bunch of people were doing it temporary. I was a student, or I don't know what it, I was doing at the time. I don't even remember what year it was. But um, she actually said she was kind of a bit bizarre. And I wound up having to leave that job because of her. Actually, she, she got us in... Anyway. But what she did... She, we were all sitting outside, you know, people went out on their breaks, and they sat outside. Some people were going out there to smoke cigarettes. Some were just going out there to take a break, you know, we get out in the fresh air, well, without the cigarette smoke. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, they'll stand outside, but there was a, sh uh, we call it the smoke shack. But it was really a kind of building they had there, and um, it, it was open. There was no, you know, like there were no windows where the windows would be. It was all open. It was just like a shack in a way. It was nice. And we would all sit out there and talk and, you know, take our breaks and such. And one day she just kind of started talking to herself. She stood up, started talking to herself out loud, not looking at anybody's direction. And she was saying, she told a story of when she remembered when she was working at a call center. I guess you call them call center whatever it is, she was working as, you know, she had every, you know, the customers would call in and she had all their information on their screen. And basically she said that one woman was really rude to her. So she took the woman's, uh, inf you know, information. It was local. So she took the woman's information, her address, her phone number and all that. And she stalked her and harassed her. I mean, this woman was just talking to herself and admitting this. And tell, everybody was like, their eyes were wide open, like, what the crap <laughs> you know, is going on here? Talking to herself. No cell, cell phone, no ear whatever for the phone. Nothing. Just talking to herself. But she basically harassed somebody. You see? So, you know, it's because the woman didn't speak to her like she thought she should. Okay? Like she should have put her up on a pedestal or something. But I don't know. Anyway, yeah, these kind of things happen, but I, I gather, you know, it was more of some of the things that she did, some of the other things that she did kind of proved to me that besides talking to herself like that, out loud, just standing there, oof, weird, but you know, I wasn't the only one who thought it was weird, so, but the, some of the other things she did while working there, she was one to blame the victim. 
She would do the wrong. She would blame the you know, blame her victim repeatedly. Yeah. Anyway, I think I've gone on and on and on too much, but I think you can put the rest of it together. I want to go ahead and wrap this video up. And what about you? Have you had any experiences like such along this line? Anyway, I think I'm going to cut my um, comments off because I've uh, been getting really those annoying. I'm not the only person who gets those annoying bot, um, robot bot, I call it. I've always called it all these many years since 1990. Um, many of us have bot. Um, comments that they don't even count as um, they, they go in and leave them so quickly they don't even count as views um, but those comments are if you click on it it can lead to some trouble okay it's uh, and then always about hot sexy mamas dating online this kind of crap you know just a bunch of BS I mean actually from what I've heard you know seen videos on that it's, it's not it's it can get you a person into some trouble and um, anyway, I kept I kept getting those, and then the other day I uh, I just I have mine set to where any comment I have to approve it before anybody but me sees it. it nobody's going to see it until I approve it or disapprove it, um, whatever I decide to do. And I kept getting all those, and I went through them, and um, I've turned my comments off before because of hoping that they would stop, but they haven't. They just keep going. And I clicked on someone to report a spam. That's what, you know, when the option report abuse or spam or something like that. And the next thing I know, somebody that I, that I wanted to have her comment on there, it just disappeared. And my thought was, maybe I clicked that. So I went to see if she was blocked. She wasn't blocked. I went to, I don't know how it works. And there was no information that says, how can you unreport something? And in case I had to click that button, you know, because I was just going through boom, 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 like that kind of thing. And uh, there was no such thing. I could not find. So, and I'm like, why do I need comments? Because I don't need the comments. I really don't. I mean, I know it's supposed to help and all that, but no, I don't want to have. You know, I asked her if she knew. Me, you know, if, uh, how, you know. <clears throat> anyway, I don't need these comments because I know, you know, the people who are on my side or not on my side, whatever. You know, after six years on my original channel. And uh, it's just that that that's, could happen. And I don't want to report or you know, block somebody or whatever. Somebody that I appreciate, you see. So, I'm just going to turn them off. That is so annoying. And I would be afraid that I might click on it by accident. And then what? Something screw me up really bad? I reported them to YouTube too. So... I reported one, other than just clicking that button, I wrote, actually wrote them a uh, feedback. <laughs> but they still happen. And I have more than one channel, and it's just too much, too much, too frustrating, too annoying, too what nerve. Anyway, I'm wrapping this one up. If you even made it this far, <laughs> I don't know why that's on. But anyway, I'll talk to you on another video. Bye.